Welcome to Ministry in Motion, where we explore best practices for your ministry in the 21st century. We have a very special guest today, Dr. Benjamin Reeves. Dr. Benjamin Reeves is Special Advisor to the President for Mission and Ministries for Adventist Health System. He has served as Professor of Preaching and Urban Ministry at Andrews University, Chairman of Religion Department at Oakwood University, President of Oakwood University, and General Conference Field Secretary of the General Conference before joining Adventist Health System in 1997. Dr. Benjamin Reeves holds a bachelor's degree in theology, a master's degree in church history, a master of divinity in practical theology, and a doctorate of ministry in church and society. Ben, welcome. Welcome to Ministry in Motion. We're so Thank appreciative that you're here. Thank you very much. It's my joyous privilege. Now, today's program, we're going to call it Scalpel Moments because you have just written a wonderful new book called Scalpel Moments. Yes. And we'd like to explore this book with you and our viewers today. Talk us through the, the title itself, yeah. Scalpel Moments. Scalpel Moments. They are those occasions in life that are frozen by reality and they are unexpected, unanticipated. It may be an encounter, it may be a word, it, it may be a comment, a look, a realization, or it may be a divine intrusion like a extremely sharp scalpel that peels back layers of professional accumulation, layers that we take for granted, mm. that we rationalize, overlooked layers of attitude, options, choices, decisions, or behaviors. And I'm convinced that often they are layers that hide the better you. Okay. And as they are peeled back in those scalpel moments, those moments can also become moments of grace. Mm. So this, these are profound times, aren't they? They're moments of realization when God, because I presume that's who holds the scalpel. Yes. Okay. When, when God works with that sharp but gracious penetrating scalpel. All to the point of bringing healing. Mm. Yeah. And growing us. Yes. And growing us as people. Yeah. Now, early in the book, readers discover that this volume addresses the big issues of life. I'd like to read just a, a sentence uh, from page 19. It says there, is there something in your life that you'd be better off without? What habits or life circumstances have you slipped into that are causing you pain? Now, Dr. Reeves, you're a man of experience, a man of intellect, a godly man. What are those big issues of life? If you had three minutes to speak to, say, a, a, a person in the formative years of their lives, particularly a pastor or somebody who's doing ministry in their local church, what would you say to them about the big issues of life? Well, and that's a big question. It is. But uh, the big issues of life, one that immediately comes to my mind, which should not need to be repeated, is that life is not a reality show. Right. It's reality. Yeah. And so it is not enough to dream about so-called sequences and outcomes because life carries with it certain absolutes. And I think whether it's a pastor or whether it's a teenager or whether it's an adult, there are certain things we need to keep in mind, one of which is choices have consequences. Mm. You can make the choice, but you can't choose the consequence. Another one that, as I was president at Oakwood for a number of years, that I used to refer or relate to, to the young people, I would inform them that the far country 
of the prodigal son? Yeah. It's not that far. Not that far. Just a step away. Just a step away. So true. And it is so easy to make a decision and then consequences that follow that are far beyond what you ever imagined would happen. Choices have consequences. Mm, yeah. Life is a serious business, isn't it? Yes, it is. You, you know, choices have consequences and the far countries not so far. It's not all. that far, not that far. In fact, I would add another one to that and that is that uh, pig pens can be penthouses. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And as you move in the sophisticated circles of life, if you listen closely, you might just hear the snorting of the pigs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's graphic. Yeah. Um, in your book, you, you explore many things. There's one question that I'd, I'd really like to ask you, and that's pertaining to the last chapter. The last chapter in your book, Dr. Reeves, is a blank chapter. And I haven't seen this before in a book, but you've, you've left it there for people to write their own chapter on scalpel moments. What, what are you hoping that readers of your book will do with that? What's your vision for that? Desperately hoping for buy-in in a personal way where the recipients of the book would be willing, encouraged, feel free to look very much at their own lives, not just the stories about biblical characters or others, but look in their own lives and try to identify for them those scalpel moments that maybe they missed and now they can bring back to mind and they can recover and grow. A personal engagement is what I really hope, not just reading a book, personal engagement. Wonderful. Okay. Stay right there. We'll be back with more Ministry in Motion and Scalpel Moments. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today is Scalpel Moments and our very special guest is Dr. Benjamin Reeves. Now, Ben, I'd like to bring you to the second chapter of your book, a chapter that has the title Brass for Gold. And in this chapter, you describe succinctly and powerfully how ancient Israel went from the time of Solomon to Rehoboam. It was a time of decline. And there were these 300 gold shields that were hung on the, the temple walls. And you explain how Rehoboam had abandoned the values, the ideals of Yahweh, and that King Shishak of Egypt was given permission to come and attack. And uh, he ransacked the treasury and he took with him those 300 gold shields. Now, reading, I'd, I'd like you to grab that the copy of your book right there Alrighty. and turn to page 29 and you, you offer a very powerful warning there in page 29 and this, I'd love to hear you read that. This is a powerful moment in the book and I'd love our, our viewers to be able to grasp that and experience that with you. Is there a warning here for us? a warning about the ever-present danger of losing the golden shields of purity, honesty, integrity, consecration, and commitment. If this is the warning, then it is so needed, especially in light of the fact that traits like honesty, 
and integrity have become the hit and run victim of a moral recession. Disturbing reports of government officials, judges, bankers, priests, and ministers, leaders for whom surely there once was a day when the walls of their souls were hung with shields beaten out of the gold of honorable ambition, high ideals, and unquestioned integrity. And yet, somewhere and somehow, the gold is gone, and on the walls hang only empty hooks. In the flickering light of memory, we can all recall yesteryear or literally yesterday when the walls of our life temples were covered with golden shields. That's powerful and a solemn warning to us. That it is. And sometimes when the shields have gone, it's too late. How, how do we recognize when those shields are under threat in our lives? And how do we avoid making that mistake of making those shields vulnerable? Holding to the gold mm. is a constant, dare I say, daily effort. Mm -hmm. Effort that is grounded in a divine resource but an effort that recognizes the reality that almost quickly the gold is gone. Yeah. And the greater danger is the substitution of brass for gold. Instead of an attempt to recover the gold, substitute brass for gold. Yeah. A substitute is, is rather pathetic, isn't it? Pathetic, deceiving, and disastrous. Yeah, yeah. And even avoiding the substitute, there's the emptiness that can be there as well. And let's be thankful for that emptiness that may serve can serve as an alarm clock mm. that something is wrong. I've lost something. Yeah. I'm not the me that I once was. Yeah, yeah. What, what are the danger signals that people should be seeing? Because oftentimes it, it doesn't happen in one step. No. Oftentimes there's a, a, a succession. How do we recognize those danger signals? How, how can we be cognizant of it and realizing where it can lead to? I'm convinced that that kind of sensitivity can only grow out of a continuing vital relationship with God, staying in touch with Him helps us to be sensitive to the things that we might overlook or miss about ourselves. But yeah. it's very easy if we're not maintaining that relationship that the gold, wasn't there gold there? Yeah. Wasn't there gold there? The gold is gone. Yeah. Do you think God can work through mentors that we may have to, to make us aware that the direction that we may be tending towards is a, a, a dangerous journey? Yes, God can. God will make us aware. The issue is, will we accept what God is now showing us through these mentors? Yeah. Or will we go for the substitute instead? Yeah. Substitutes that are pleasing to the eye. Yeah. But as someone said, gold is gold, brass may look like gold, but brass is brass. Yeah. And 
Ben, as I mentioned before, you're a man who's seen a lot of life and you're in good shape by seeing a lot of that life. Uh, uh, oh, I celebrate that. <laughs> and how, how do you maintain that, what would you say, how do you survive those scalpel moments when, when God or mentors or somebody near and dear to you has something that they've got to say and it can't be comfortable for them to say it? How do you, how do you respond to that? To recognize that um, God, through those mentors, is still working and is focused on your best interest for you. I may not like what you tell me, mm -hmm. but God will use what you tell me to help me be a better person. Mm. Now, there's some details in some scalpel moments that I'd like to explore with you and your own personal journey with those. But we're out of time in this section. We'll need to do it straight after this break. All right. So stay with us. We'll be right back with more scalpel moments and more ministry in motion. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today is Scalpel Moments. We're exploring a wonderful book called Scalpel Moments with the author, Dr. Benjamin Reeves. Now, Ben, there's a, a part of the book that I'd really like to bring you to. It's in chapter 16. And uh, you, you're right there in this chapter that's called Living Expectantly. You quote Isaiah 43, 18, which says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. And then you write something really quite profound in a book that has many profound sentences. This one particularly caught me. It's on page 173. It says, I think that for too long we've subsisted on the crumbs of spiritual nostalgia. How do you avoid living in the past and avoiding the crumbs of spiritual nostalgia. How do we live expectantly? Again, living expectantly is rooted deeply in the soil of relationship. Mm -hmm. A growing, vital, ever increasing relationship and unless we are experiencing that kind of relationship in that kind of soil, with that kind of growth, we tend to, oh, it was great then. Mm -hmm. Those were the days of commitment. And we even encourage ourselves that, yeah, I really gave it all to the Lord then, but that's not enough. God is calling us not to remember yesterday, but to live expectantly for that which will supersede yesterday if we are just open to it. Mm. So a, a living relationship rather than a pickled past. Oh, I it's... love that. And I love the alliteration. <laughs> okay. Pickled past, yes. And something we look forward to rather than living off yesteryear's devotionals or yesteryear's prayer time. Yes. Having a, a growing time today that leads us into tomorrow. Continual growing time. Mm, yeah. Now, as I read your book as well, it was clear and abundantly clear to me that you portray God as a loving, gracious, and big God, but a kind and gracious surgeon, a surgeon with a sharp scalpel. Now, there seems to be a, a sub-theme in your book that each of us, through these scalpel moments, experiences pain, discomfort, and even grief. And let me fess up here. Sure. Three days ago, I conducted 
the funeral for my mother. So I'm seeing grief in a lot of places now. And as, as I read this chapter, a particular chapter on yours called Picking Up the Pieces, which is chapter 10, I couldn't help but notice that there was some grief in there for you. Oh, yeah. You nudge it, you don't go into too much detail, but I sensed it was there. Grief. How do we manage grief? I'm reluctant to use the word control, but how do we manage grief so that it's not debilitating, but it's positive and we can grow through it? Well, you've, you've um, wielded the scalpel at this very moment because I still am journeying in terms of the loss of my wife of 58 years, the love of my life. And there were often times that I would ask myself, how do I handle it? How do I deal with it? And I'm a minister who has counseled other people in their grief. And I can't help but think that at that time, maybe some elderly senior citizen would look at me offering all of the easy answers and they would say to themselves, poor fella, one day he'll understand. Well, yes. He understands. And what I do understand, in part, not fully, mm -hmm. I do understand is, no, this is my view, we do not manage grief. Yeah. We don't manage grief. We live with grief, mm -hmm. and I feel the most productive thing that we can do is to refrain grief. Reframe instead of focusing on what I have lost. Focus on the gift that I was able to enjoy for those 58 years. Yeah. Reframe. Manage. <laughs> yeah. Reframe. Reframe. Celebrate. Celebrate. Ben, thank you. Thank you for coming on and being open and honest. Thank you. And we want to thank you for joining us as well. This is truly a wonderful book, Scalpel Moments. Dr. Benjamin Reeves has been kind enough to share 25 copies of these. If you'd like to be one of those lucky few, write in to us at feedback at ministryinmotion.tv. And if you're the first from your country, We'd love to share a complimentary copy of this wonderful book with you, Scalpel Moments. Thanks for joining us for another Ministry in Motion. May God bless you in your ministry and join us again on Ministry in Motion. Until then, God bless.